All right, well, I'm very interested in this subject. I was also interested to see the conference report watches napalm. I saw those videos before I even saw this reply for a change. Um, on TJ was bitching about free speech. Well, that bastard's had plenty of resources. You know, to create a new site and supposedly tried to do it. Now he's going to complain. I uh, just, whatever. Um, the uh, edible napalm has become one of the great bloggers, by the way, I would say. It's a classic. When somebody finally makes a uh, independent documentary, you know, to play at the art houses about this phenomena, uh, I think Edible Napalm's got to be in that. But, um, it's had like a hundred channels. But anyway, uh, so, conference report is talking about uh, what we need to do. He's big on the P2P, peer-to-peer -peer approaches. Now, in a way, that's coming anyway. Like, uh, But I'll say this. I don't think we need a standalone peer-to-peer -peer program. The problem with that is you have to reproduce everything. What you want and what you can now do with HTML5 coming along is you can... Basically, um, you know, browsers can do a lot more processing, like in my map. They do a lot of their, the browser goes straight to YouTube and gets the information itself. The server is really just another peer, except for it serves one purpose. You have to have peers that are up all the time, right? So you can reach them. Um, but the, it's pretty lightweight what it's doing. Just saying, you know, here's what I know right now, and then while you're, working with the website, it's going straight to YouTube. It's not using that server at all. That server gets to rest. And it can even pre-digest some of the information, you know, and, and send things down or, or send information because you, the user told it, like, this was a good video. And it says, oh, it was, this is a good video. You could have the browser software scanning YouTube, in other words, and just sending to the, just sending to the server the videos that that user thinks were worthwhile. It's a lot better than a thumbs up, thumbs down, because people have to interact with the software in order to create that. And that's my goal, is to have a system where you sort and weigh things by their interaction. You know, if someone clicks on a video, oh, it was an attractive title or whatever, it gets, you know, plus one point. But if they thumb it down, it gets minus three points, so that the, it's the net result is negative two. Because if something lures people in to watch it, then it sucks. It should lose points for that. It shouldn't just be like, oh, I got one point because people clicked on me, and then the rest doesn't matter, so now it's going to come up in the popular videos from most viewed. You know, so there's ways to take behavior. That's a bad example because the thumb up, thumb down. I'm, I'm really thinking more about, you know, people paused and quit the video at this point and that point. And, and more subtle things, or actually I'm thinking about my map, and I'm like, well, if people check out certain uh, things more than other things, then that could be turned in, okay, they're more interested in that. And only that interest has to be sent to the server, so it's pretty cheap. And it's basically a peer-to-peer -peer environment where you have certain uh, consistent peers or fat peers, but peers that might have a lot of data, more than a little computer wants to hold, and be up all the time so they can serve it. And part of that is like the basic web pages. But the peer to peer ability of the browser is getting to be great. I mean, pretty soon you're going to be able to basically have browsers talk straight to other browsers when you want to. Right? So if you, you have a video game site, um, your, your website just tells two people about each other and they're able to actually send messages back and forth so they could play their ping pong or whatever. It's going to be more efficient. And it's, it's basically a peer-to-peer -peer model. Now my frustration is I can make all this stuff plus I've been doing a lot of project work my whole life but in the last like four years basically the work that I've done integrates with each other. The last thing I had to do was get off of Google and now I'm in an open source environment where it's very certain that the you know the uh, technology is reliable not only technologically, but in terms of, you know, it's not like Google can change its pricing plan and then our, you know, sustainability model is affected. So with a server like this, um, there is an issue of, okay, if you're going to stream thousands of video, that's expensive. And you're right, putting the data elsewhere 
is the solution. On the other hand, you don't really have to design software on top of that kind of system to do that because this new peer-to-peer -peer model already accepts that, right? So if you're going to use the HTML5 video player, you can have a URL that can point anywhere. As long as there's a URL, it can be a numeric IP, it can be, uh, you know, uh, LimeWire colon, you know, so that it uses some special client. And because you have this video player standard of the new video tag, um, there's some guarantee people to have a target and therefore it will be possible to feed things into and out of it. It won't really matter where the data comes to the browser from, right? And if it's some new kind of protocol, well, you know, browsers already know a lot of protocols. They know Gopher, Mail, FTP, HTTP, the S version, you know, of, of of HTTP and FTP. So we can, um, you know, you can add protocols, you know, so plugins. So I think it should be done through the browser. Now the frustrating part for me now is not only do I have the capabilities to write this kind of software, but I actually have the full stack. I have, you know, the beginnings of what you would need for any of these kinds of projects. And uh, so that like if I had two or three months a lot of these projects in two or three months, I use the tools I have to make that actual incarnation of something usable. You know what I mean? When you have a bunch of lumber and all the tools you need to build a house, you still need to decide, well, do I want to build a ranch house? Is it going to be colonial? You know, what is the style? You have, I have the tools. Now it takes a few months to build a house. Also, you need to decide. Also, I have to work for a living. Now, I, uh, I moved here 10 years ago and my salary was cut in half and it was because I thought I was having I didn't think my marriage was working out I needed to be there for my kids and and I wanted I needed long term and I couldn't have this crazy startup mentality and uh, and I was gonna be a single dad and uh, that's what happened and to a certain degree it, uh, Anyway, that all went to fucking hell. But it did work out that way. I mean, I did have that time, and, and I could work more reliably in a science. You know, my current title is I'm a senior science software engineer. I work on uh, data reduction software that, that the institutions and scientists use to analyze data taken from scientific device devices. <laughs> and my skill is sort of in the plug-in ability. I know how to make systems where uh, you can decompose a problem into its parts, so you could just make little parts. Uh, for example, on my map, you know, the map itself is one little project, and the thing that allows you to do the scanning is another little project, and they're very lightly coupled. So now the problem is, we don't have enough money, right? Uh, I, I'm ready to switch what I want to do again. If I went back to the commercial world, which is one possibility, not only would I double my salary again, but I'd probably triple it. Um, I'm more experienced, but, but more so because the going rate for my kind of software engineering has just gone through the roof. Uh, they pay us like doctors used to get paid if you want to go work for Google or Netflix or something. But uh, I'm not really too interested in that, um, that, in that lifestyle and the way they, they have some weird ways they like at Google. Everybody sits in these open spaces. There's no privacy. You can't close your door and fill your office with music and stuff like that. I just culturally and, uh, you know, in two weeks of vacation a year, you have to work through those sometimes, and it's just like, okay, if you want to be company and live that thing. I, I don't want to do that for, you know, to help Google track our eyes to sell ads better. I also have started to see how I think Google, as much as it was ahead of Microsoft and stuff, it's now its turn to miss the boat. All right. Um, and suffer from its uh, investment in old technology as this huge wave of HTML5 is coming through. On the other hand, I suppose they'll recover and continue to grow. Don't get me, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not predicting the end of Google, nor do I think they're as evil as you know some people around here think. But I do think they are going to serve our purpose, like writing my software on the Google App Engine. I knew that wasn't really 
sustainable in the long run, but it's just a hobby, a hobby thing, and they, they made it worthwhile. Um, but to actually, like, launch a free speech site and do it that way, no, not going to work. But using this uh, virtual server approach to the cloud like Rackspace has, which, my, which is the server I'm using, I'm using no SQL, a lot of JavaScript, putting, um, uh, relying on the, the client software to be in the browser, browser and act like a standalone program, not like a web page, but a, a program. Um, anyway, this is a new model, and that's what I'd rather work on. Now, the problem is, um, well, I could look for people doing that, but I already have my own model. And also, I'm, uh, I'm not greedy. I don't want to triple my salary. I'd be perfectly happy to keep my salary the same. Actually, if I could work on something that was online, and I could move anywhere and move to Maine or somewhere that's inexpensive to live, um, I don't need to be compensated the way I would by have to if I'm going to go work for the corporate, corporate megalis my final years. Right? Again. So problem is you guys don't have the money but it's kind of a funny thing because you know if uh, I don't know uh, if you have like 5,000 people that are willing to spend ten dollars a month they could make their own software if they want to plug in for word they could make that if they want a game it could be made you know in three six months a year, in most cases, you, you know, depending how ambitious it is. A big 3D game like Grand Theft Auto, okay, you need more. But these kind of projects can be done by a few people, uh, a couple engineers, a system man, somebody that's going to do promotion. Um, the problem is those people getting together and realizing that that's worth it. Now, my current idea is to finish this demo and uh, see, just see what it's like. And then maybe I'll start applying to jobs. Um, and I notice Al Jazeera has a job opening in, in San Francisco. Say if I'm going to go work for, assuming they pay competitively, if I'm going to go work for corporations, I'd like it to be. I've kept my places I've worked interesting in some sense like that. Uh, to me, you know, not, not in general, of course. So, uh, if I put that up and there's a demo, I think that there might be something to do a Kickstarter. And, and again, you know, uh, I'm getting older, job security would be kind of nice if you need to work somewhere and just go, you know what, I like this, I'll stay here forever. But I'm sick of Hawaii, to tell you the truth. Um, and, uh, but I don't really need that kind of assurance. If I had six months of pay, um, I'd make the thing and just take my chances at the end, you know, to see if, if I was going to, if it was going to continue or now I needed to get a commercial job or now it's time for a new Kickstarter. And, um, the thing is, I'm not the kind of guy that's going to be really good at, at the Kickstarter stuff. I, I don't want to post to Twitter, ooh, new version of the software and, you know, Facebook, they keep your presence on Facebook. Somebody has to do that in parallel while I'm working. Somebody needs to be going, hey, we're working on the blah, 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 should be done any minute. And if I'm posting that, it's not going to be done any minute. I'm busy, busy on Facebook. You know, while the person's posting that, I'm working on it. Do, 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 do. And then they're done with their post. And I'm like, yep, yeah, look, here it is. It's working. I have to finish three or four things. So it's frustrating because I want to do this. And, uh, and even though I'm like willing to say, well, geez, what if I had three months of money? Would I, you know, quit and do that instead? That's not quite reliable. It'd have to be at least six months. And I'd have to think that there was a chance I could do the software in three months because, you know, like they say with software, the, for, uh, nine, the last 10% of, uh, of the project takes half the time. So, by the way, it's really hard to smoke. This stuff is working. Um, this has triggered me enough, and my body still wants the, uh, wants the nicotine. So there's still a little urge to nicotine, but I'm like, I'm trying to, it makes you, it's a negative feedback. It makes you want to 
smoke as little as possible, so it's hard for me to take more than a couple of <coughs> drags on my cigarette.